Okay, so we're here to discuss uh, CAS in the core and just the main um, things that are expected from the students, what the IB expects, and then the idea was to sort of focus on the project and try to link that to some of the ATLs for the DP. In particular, self-management is the big one, I think, because they need to have uh, the ability to manage the project on top of everything else, and the project is somewhat of a bigger, a bigger uh, commitment for them. Okay. So first, I want to uh, remind people what is it actually that CAS stands for. And um, surprisingly, sometimes people actually don't get the, the letters correct. Community, right? See? <laughs> no. So we have creativity, activity, and service. And these are sort of the three components that the IB wants them to take uh, when they approach these, these experiences or the project in a way that they are stepping out of the the confines of the academic part of the curriculum to get them to do other things other than their, their subject package. Okay, and each one sort of has a specific um, set of requirements and how it is recognized as creativity, as activity, or as service. Okay, I'm just gonna give a brief overview and any supplemental documents will be in the, the page that you will set up for them. Okay, so the first one is creativity. And just uh, quickly, what does, how does the IB define creativity? They say that this is exploring and extending ideas leading to an original or interpretive product or performance. And this can be anything you can imagine that would be creative. So art, uh, photography, they want to learn to write a story, they want to develop a website. So anything that sort of stretches their creative juices, if you will. Okay. It's interesting, huh? Because it's, it's not, it's, it, it's, it's a little more specific than just developing a new skill full stop. It's, there's the idea of performance in there. Yeah, and they have to be able to say, because it's creativity, so I'm, I'm doing this thing where I'm exploring some creative aspect. And again, it can be anything down to they want to learn to code, for example. This can be classified. Mm -hmm. If they're not, if they say, I don't like to paint, I don't like art, it can be something like they learn to code. And then in that case, what would that product be? Perhaps they generate a code that works. Or they uh, take a dance class and they have some evidence of learning a sequence of steps or a new move. They can write a story. So it's anything that they can show result of the creative process at the end. Nice. It doesn't and doesn't have to be a you know, then put on a stage performance play, but any kind of aspect that shows, yes, in fact I was able to accomplish that creative goal, however big or small that was. Okay, and it again this is very small lists. Quite often they come up with other ideas as well. Um, and if they can justify it as creativity and they can say how they will show that at the end, then, then quite often it can be creativity. Second one is activity. So the IB defines this one as you would imagine, which is physical exertion contributing to a healthy lifestyle. We also sometimes link this to things. This can be linked also to something um, that is still physical exertion, but maybe um, related also to things like diet. Can be, it's a healthy lifestyle it may overlap in there somewhat. Examples can be the following, they play a team sport, they go to the gym, they want to train for a run, dance. Manual labor. Manual labor. All time favorite. It can be, uh, sometimes people create, link this with creativity because they want to build something, but a big structure, and then they have the manual labor part, manual labor part linked with having to redesign the, um, a room or something, and they can link those two together. Nice. as well. So it doesn't have to be standalone. Quite often it is standalone, but it doesn't have to be. That looks a little bit more in the direction of the project, right? And this can bring them to what we'll talk about after, which is a project, because quite often the project will, doesn't have to, but will link one or two or three of the strands together. Third one is service. So this is your classic sort of service learning that you think about. Uh, IB says this is collaborative and reciprocal engagement with the community in response to an authentic need. Again, this is a very small list of um, ideas. They come up with quite better ones. The main point here is that it needs, they need to be able to show there's an authentic need. Mm -hmm. And the need can't be I'm going to um, clean my bedroom because mm -hmm. it has to be a need that somebody in the outside community yeah. somehow yeah. indirect or direct takes advantage of. Yeah, indeed, and there's no reciprocal engagement with that, you know. So they have to be able to say this, they have to be able to justify that this is an authentic need and this is why. Um, and quite often this again can be linked to one of the other strands. The one caveat here is they can't do things like uh, jobs, things related to a job 
-hmm. because if they receive any kind of monetary um, payment, they can't. Mm -hmm. it, it can't be cast. We can get around that if they then do something like donate the money to a cause. Then they can still get around that issue somehow. Okay. Uh, and then that sort of caps off again. They are able to sort of um, turn that authentic need into a real into a real service at the end if they're able to have received funding and then they, they donate that away. But again, this is up to them to sort of be able to outline this in their plan or how they want to approach it. Uh, service, I say there's more to it than that because when they click service, they have to sort of say what type of service it is. So they are things like direct, which means there's a direct interaction with the recipient of the service. Uh, indirect would be, an example can be they, um, they work on a website for an NGO and they never actually come in contact with them, but then that, a that agency is able to capitalize on the service. So that would be sort of indirect. Um, advocacy, so they fight for uh, somebody or some entity that needs, needs to be represented. Uh, research, so the service can be, they gather information to put out maybe a publication to inform the community of, of a need. And then it's either community-based, so it happens outside, school-based, something that happens within the school community. Even if it happens outside but we are administering it, it would be school-based, ongoing or individual. Because ongoing would be long-term, obviously individual is just them on their own. So what does the IB actually expect from them? This is really it. So they have 18 months of CAS learning. What this means is from the time that they start, which is usually September, October of DP1, they are to continue for 18 months consecutive without gaps in the timeline. This then fulfills this first requirement of 18 months of CAS learning. So it's to show this continuous involvement over the 18 month period, including the summer between DP1 and DP2. They expect a reasonable balance between the three strands. So meaning if they are somebody that is really active, that's fine. They probably will have more of them as activity, but they must have a few service and a few creativity in there. And this is kind of, this is this is one of the parts where our role as classroom teachers kind of comes into yeah, comes into play because students are gonna need um, to be kind of yeah, students are gonna need inspiration to act against different strands. So the opportunities that we can offer through our written and taught curriculum might fill the gaps for somebody who's struggling for creativity or for activity or for service, and it might allow them maybe to have access to kind of higher quality, um, yeah, higher quality CAS activities than were we not to promote it. We've had cases where, for example, this is a good example, one of the subject teachers needed to um, redecorate the room to make it match more. It was quite uninspiring and recruited a student or two to do this for them that was able to sort of incorporate the idea of what's behind that subject mm -hmm. and how they could make it expressed on the walls in the room and this counted as a, as a small experience mm -hmm. but allowed them to they could uh, put it through as creativity and in the end the end product was the fact that they had this create a product to show which is the change in the room before and after yeah and this is an example of linking it to a subject um, beyond what is the subject requirements because they can't make that double dipping where they can't use a subject requirement for CAS, but they can definitely contribute to a subject as mm -hmm. long as it's not part of the written curriculum. Okay. Uh, I'll do this one last. The three CAS interviews, these are scripted interviews. There are three PDFs. They're in the files. They will happen three times, so over the whole 18-month period. The first two happen in DP1. The third one happens with the Viva Voce. They are timed to match the three extended essay interviews to make less of a need for meetings between students and staff. So when the three uh, reflections happen for the extended essay, the idea is that there's an extra 10 minutes tacked on and these three interviews occur at the same time. And then the interview can be uploaded to, to their profile. Um, Let's do the seven. The seven learning outcomes have to be achieved. These are on the following two slides, and they are basically similar to the idea they would have had in uh, MYP, where they have to say, I would like to achieve this learning outcome with this activity. Uh, it could be ethics, for example. They, they link ethics to it, and then the idea is that when they look back on that activity and they reflect on it, they reflect on how was I able to achieve the learning outcome that I selected. We usually except one or two learning objectives per experience. For projects which are bigger, they can get up to three or four. Um, 
So that's usually kind of the limit that we have. Some experiences may get three if it's really uh, intricate, but usually it's one or two. And then the idea is they must reflect on those specific learning outcomes that they've achieved, and I'll show them on the next slide. And then just quickly before I switch is the last bubble is about the project, which I'll talk about at the end because this is sort of the, the, the focus of this talk today. And the fact that they must have one project completed during, during DP. For us, it's a school requirement that this happens in DP1. And the reason is because it's a lot of work and can flow into DP2 in the time when they get stressed and they have exams and they have other other focuses in mind. Okay, so I'm just gonna show the learning outcomes and then we'll look at the project. Oh, they're not there. Oh, well. One moment. The learning outcomes have disappeared. They have disappeared, but they we will be sure that they are in, they were supposed to be here, they are in, um, in the files, it's just a list of seven, very similar to what they've done in Service and Action. So they pick Sorry, ethics, no. they pick, okay, they pick ethics, they pick collaboration, they pick um, initiative. If they wanna show initiative, maybe it's a new activity, and then they show how they planned it and organized it. Okay, it's, it's quite straightforward. If we look at the project, this is the big one. What are the basic requirements? They must have one month in length, and it's one calendar month. So when they put it through, it must be like the first to the 31st of the month as a minimum. Usually though, they are quite long and they encompass a longer period than that. They can have a minimum obviously of one cast strand or they can have up to all three depending on how in depth that activity is. And they may have multiple learning outcomes. They usually have three for a cast project because they are quite big. They are collaborating because that's one of the main points. So that's usually one learning outcome right there and then they usually can attach another two. And the collaboration is with one or more fellow students, so CAS learners. So they will collaborate with another colleague who's doing CAS to initiate, plan, launch uh, this project. And then they have the typical project cycle where they need to um, come up with the idea, they need to plan the idea then they take action, then they demonstrate the outcome, and in those periods, they reflect on it. And this is where we find the students struggle a little bit. Also trying to manage their time, manage what they need to do, when they need to reflect, how they need to see it as a full cycle. Mm -hmm. And this was why we thought this was nice to link it to the ATLs. Yeah, absolutely, and this might be, yeah, this might be one reason that, but my feeling at this time of year, the DP students do need a little more support they do need to develop those effective skills that allow them to, yeah, to multitask a little bit more effectively. Yeah. That allow them to keep these kind of multiple balls in there as the extended essay increases in intensity and the CAS project kind of becomes a thing because it has to be done at some point in DB1 and odds are they haven't done it before Christmas. No, usually it's this period that they are wrapping everything up at the same time yeah. and becoming overwhelmed. So part of the reason in previous years that it was done in the, in the DP1 was to avoid that this happens in DP2. Yeah. that's when they have the exams coming up. So they must have all of the requirements through in DP1 and then they're just maintaining their CAS in DP2 for the eight, to cover the 18 month period. Uh, let's have a look. So that was the basic requirements from the IB, but just obviously the projects are big and this was the one this year that we struggled with the most because of the distancing and because of the, the lockdown and required um, me reaching out to some agencies that needed online jobs, things that the students could do remotely, which was a way we were able to facilitate a few projects because then there was no issue with the lockdown and issue with uh, distancing and all of that. So what they also require, obviously they need an idea, so what do they want to do? Is it gonna be creativity? Is it gonna be activity? Is it gonna be service? Is it gonna be a combination? Um, they need to have the initiative to come up with the idea and start the planning because the difference between a project and an experience is that projects require an initiative on the part of the student to come up with the idea and get it launched. Then they have to make a plan because it's a big, a bigger experience, it's a bigger task. They have to know sequentially what they're going to do. Eventually they take action and the action might actually be quite short. Sometimes they find that the bigger part of the project is the planning. And then when they execute, it's maybe a day or it's an afternoon, and they've actually got their outcome, and that was actually quite short in the timeline, and that quite often happens. And then they need to have evidence of 
uh, meaningful reflections, so taking a little bit of a step up from what they've done in the past, where they show how did they achieve the learning outcome, or maybe they didn't really, and they reflect on what they could have done, or how things could have gone differently, and why that project was meaningful for them. And this would obviously differ for each student, what was meaningful about it. For this, we use the five stages document. It looks like this. It is also in the files that I've given you. If it's a project, they must submit this. If it's a long-term experience, a really long, I sometimes will ask for it because they're, they're initiating something that's going to take the whole school year. They need to have a plan, even if it's an experience. For short, uh, shorter items, we don't ask for it. And the idea is that before they initiate the, the project, they would fill this out where they think about what is the genuine need for the experience for the project, how are they prepared, what do they need, do they have what they need, or do they have to do something before they can start, and then what do they think they will do. And then later, in later stages of the project, they will then reflect on the outcome and then reflect on the experience as a whole. Okay, and this brings us to what we were talking about, which might be important, is how do we link uh, projects, specifically, because a lot of students have struggled, uh, with the ATLs for the DPs. And the other aspect I was a bit interested in is how do we make the ref reflections more meaningful? Because as we see also, I think, with NYP, the same situation where some students are just really great at reflecting, and some need I think some training or help on what it is that we expect from them in one of these reflections. So if you look at the first one with the ATLs, the question was which of the ATLs would fit best for the project? And is there some way, and this is where subject teachers come in as well, that we can link certain needs of the subject curriculums to projects? And I have a few um, ideas for that. And the reflections is, can we offer perhaps sessions where there's training or practice? And maybe this is something that can be incorporated into some of the subjects more often, the Reflect mm -hmm. on a Unit. Yeah. TOK might be a great one, I think, as it's quite yeah. good for training that kind of uh, aspect of thinking. Yeah, very definitely. And um, we have reflective moments built into, our, yeah, built into our curriculum on a weekly basis. Even naming the link at certain moments mm -hmm. is, is a good step in the right direction. And maybe even you know reminding them they are actually doing this already, so mm -hmm. that they they see that this is not a foreign entity to them. They are doing yeah. this on a daily basis. So just to show quickly where we think this links the best is self management skills for the ATLs because of the fact that they need to be taking on at the time when they're doing extended essay, they're doing TOK, they are in all of their classes. They have this project that requires an ability to plan, uh, incorporate timings, work with other people, mm -hmm. often working with an outside entity, and they need to yeah. be able to manage all of the, the, the self skills that come along with that as well. And then I think probably for the importance of time, this links best with um, developing ideas locally and globally, I think because of the CAS project and the, 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 the idea behind CAS in the first place. So just looking at the first one, which is the self-management, these are sort of the ideas that I was able to come up with, and this is where perhaps you might have some more thoughts as well. How can we embody these into the CAS project? So things such as um, setting deadlines for the students to meet. So if they have a timeline, in that timeline they'll have certain deadlines, and this forces them to work with the schedule. I know for if I can if I yeah. can put it straight away, I know that I'm going to be starting my internal assessment in ESS in like one or two weeks. It, it, we're going to start our planning somewhere around the start of June, and a huge number of these skills I can help develop through my teaching. You know, it, when I put my IA unit in uh, in manage back, students finding personal relevance. Well, we have to we have to um, set our work in a broader local and global context. Mm. Um, and it has to be something the student needs to show engagement in the process. So when I'm teaching that in my IA, I can explicitly link it to, and you need to do this, in your CAS project as well. In terms of setting deadlines, well, it's, it's not, not so hard to think about when we do this on a, on a regular basis. Practicing strategies to increase organisation and time management. Um, if they're developed then they're always useful to the students as they approach their exams, and they are things that we and can be developing well. earlier on in DP1, knowing that 
we can say to students, well, when you eventually get to your CAS project, these, these skills will be of further use. Um, and I think that maybe the last point is another big one to look at, that there may be mistakes, and this is natural, and we learn from mistakes and we grow from them, and one way that they can, can learn from that mistake is by reflecting on it and looking yeah. back and, you know, was it a mistake that I made, or was it a mistake, mm -hmm. it was unavoidable, okay, so then how do I change my plan to manage that mistake, and because th this is the natural part of, of everything we do. Yeah. I made a mistake yesterday, this morning. Yeah. One of the, uh, yeah, one thing that's kind of interesting is I've been reading a lot about procrastination at the moment, and thinking about, thinking about a procrastinator's approach to planning. Um, one really recommended way is to start off by expecting things to go wrong, and knowing that you're gonna be able to deal with it, kind of feeling empowered and assured that the mistake will happen, so be it. Yeah, and this and, uh, is kind of I the essence. There, I'll step over it. Yeah, and this is the essence, I think, behind being able to reflect on that, okay? Mm -hmm. It's going to happen in some form. What strategies then can I employ to take a different path yeah, that in a normal, a normal way for a mistake that I expect? Um, so this was sort of how I think what I see from some of the comments I've had from the students is this is the issue is a lot of it is managing themselves in the project at a time when they have other demands on them. Uh, just quickly, this is really almost the end, the idea of um, think global and act local. So when they are designing a project, it should be something that has a meaning to them. It's something a little bit bigger than taking an art class. So it's something where they are investing their time for more than a month, they are collaborating, Maybe it's to solve some sort of problem or address an issue or uh, start a nice, a nice adventure for somebody, for themselves and other people. And how can they perhaps link that to something that is a bit more meaning? So the ideas I had was, first of all, it can be something within the school. So we have projects that are school-based. They are 100% school-based. And then they are working to improve some aspect of the school, whether it's, it's uh, interactions with younger students, um, spirit committee, these are all things that where they are making a difference. It can be within the community, so this can be the local community, so Hilversum or where they live. It uh, could be a little bit of the bigger community, so is it something that is, has relevance nationally? And the fourth idea that, um, talking to some people, I think is a nice idea to sort of change a little bit the focus of the project going forward is can it be something perhaps we say maybe it, it must link to one of the SDGs? somehow mm -hmm. well, for the, uh, going forward to give it a bit more uh, meaning in that I'm doing this big project that has some sort of global relevance to something. Yeah. Even if I'm acting in the school, yeah. it has a link to something globally. Yeah, indeed, because the sustainable development goals are going to be, they are going to be mentioned kind of in a regular ba on, on a regular basis in at least some subjects. Yeah. You know, from an ESS point of view, we talk about sustainable development goals. So obviously, students are hearing about it in geography at least, maybe a little bit in bio, and for the rest, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, every now and then across the, uh, across the rest of the curriculum. But if there are moments where you've managed to incorporate sustainable development goals um, or an equivalent set of values, we could maybe even say, then that would be a nice moment to point students to what CAS opportunities, in what ways can they contribute to, uh, to these developments in a small way themselves either individually through a CAS experience or collaboratively through a mm -hmm. project. And they might be surprised then when they look back how easy it is to link their idea to one of these SDGs, right? Mm -hmm. it, it could be, even if it's very lightly linked to some sort of educational aspect, mm -hmm. they're already linked to something that has a global relevance. Yeah. Not just, it's not just a school thing anymore, but it has some relevance outside the community. Uh, last thing I think was just to show you what is included in the Dropbox file or uh, in the resource pack. Resource pack will available be in the study day folder that Ben is creating. <laughs> will be the following resources. So there is the IB subject brief, which is the one page or it's a page and a half uh, blurb from the IB on what is is CAS, and it's the one that you see typically with the blue, and they've they've made like a poster. Then there's the CAS guide and the CAS handbook. So one is ours, one is from the IB. There is the guiding questions document. This is the one that we sometimes will direct students to who are having trouble making a bit of a more meaningful reflection on some questions they can consider when they do the reflection. Mm -hmm. So that document is there. There's Feel the free to incorporate those 
questions yeah, and into you your can, own e class reflections. Exactly, and ask them also um, to reflect on some of these ideas in class. And also, if you are having the interview with them, you are more than welcome to ask them to reflect on it for CAS as well. Um, five stages document is there for you to see. Basically, it's up to them to fill it out, but it is there for your resource. There is a student checklist, uh, which matches what I cover in any case when I post the checkpoints online for them. And then there are the three interviews are there, the first cast interview, the second cast interview, and the third cast interview, so that in doubt you can find the interview form. I do mail it to the supervisors and the students, and I put it in Manage Back, but this is a fourth source where it is available. And the last one is a personal profile questionnaire, which the students um, say perhaps in the, the core session would fill out, which sort of gets them thinking about things that they're interested in. And I think, oh, and this was the last slide, I believe, was this is a nice schematic that I found, infographic, about what makes good CAS and sort of the things that the students need to think about. Because some things that come through are not CAS and we have to refuse it. And the other idea is if they can't justify it as why it matches creativity, activity, or service, it probably isn't CAS. So we sort of ask them to um, take these steps. And if it's a yes or a no, to work their way through the schematic. And if they arrive at the bottom, then it looks like it's something they can use for CAS. Okay, um, I think that's it. Yeah, so all of this will be in the resource pack. Uh -huh. And I guess we need to wish people yeah. a pleasant onward study day. Yes. And uh, we'll speak soon. Cheers, Carly. Cheers.